Hello, I'm Alan. Welcome to Enox Engineering. In this video, we'll be looking at lighting in the workshop. For some time now, I've used fluorescent lamps in the workshop. These are old office lamps, which give off yellowish light, and it's not as bright as they used to be. There comes a time when you need to replace your bulbs or your tubes. So this week, we're looking at light quality and the running costs. You can now replace fluorescent tubes with LED units and I also replace this early energy saving bulb with an LED unit that gives three times more light and uses less power. So let's go into the workshop and see how we do it. This is an angle pies lamp that's fitted on my drilling machine and it has an energy saving bulb in and what I want to find out is how much light this gives with the lamp over the top of the machine and my light meter on the table of the drilling machine that's the iPad this gives me a reading of 143 lux there on this iPad I've downloaded an app which gives me the light reading in lux on this app it uses the camera to give you the lux reading so you've got to make sure that the camera lens is under the lamp that you're checking. So if I put the iPad on the drilling machine, it's given me a reading of 143. Now this is the lamp that I'm going to use to replace the small tube. It's got um, 15 LEDs. This one's rated at 10 watt. I've taken the lampshade off. That's the fitting that was just screwed onto the side. So it's quite easy to take that off, take the wire out that went through there. So all I need to do now is fit the new light, which has this sort of backing. So I need to fit this on here. And then I'll have to put a connector block because this is all sealed. I can't take the lens off this and get into it. The lens has been bonded to the, the backing. And this is sealed here. I'll have to put a connection block on, which I don't like doing, but... I will connect the wire up to the original wire and make sure the earth is working. But to fit this onto here, as you can see, I can't drill another two holes in here. It'll just break. So what I will do is fit this onto a piece of aluminium and fit the aluminium onto there. I'm just sent to drill that and these are the screws I'm going to use holding the bracket on. This position here I will put the grommet for the cable. I've taken the grommet out of the lampshade. It's that grommet so I will drill that out to 10 millimeters but I thought it's a good opportunity to try self-tapping screws to see whether that three millimeter hole is either too big or too small. Now that's a screw to go in. I'll try that with a screwdriver see if it's got enough material there to grip. Now you can see I just put the screw in, it doesn't stick much out the inside. Now I can mark and drill the two holes this end for this bracket and drill the hole for the grommet. File the, the burr off the inside and then this 10mm grommet which would fit there. I've taken that out the lampshade. Centre drilled the first hole. That's the first drill for the screw location. Now I'll move it along. Because these screws are smaller than the holes the original ones were. I think it's to give it some movement so they can assemble them easy. I will now use the screw just to locate the centre. Adjust this till the second hole is in the middle of that. I'll take this off. Now I 
have the two holes for the bracket and the hole for the grommet. And on this side mark up two holes for the lamp. The lamp has got some elongated holes so it's not critical on this side. But I want to spread the holes each end so when that's bolted on it's using the full face to hold it. These are the screws I'm going to use on this side. Still again self tappers, just a bigger diameter. So move to the second hole. So that's the holes done. I'll file the sharp edges off. Now I need to get a connector block. I've finished drilling the block and I've fitted the grommet into the 10 millimeter hole. This white wire was already fitted on the lamp. The grommet was off the lampshade so that's fitted. I fitted a connection block on this end and I've added an earth wire. There were three wires coming out of the lamp, an earth, live and negative, and there are only two wires coming out the plug side of the lamp. This little tag will be bolted on the end there just under the fixing brackets and all that will go inside and what I'll do is cover that with some insulation tape just in case any wires come loose so you won't see all this and then this can go back on the machine. I have checked that when this lamp is fitted to the drilling machine there is an earth connectivity through it so I'll try that again when I put it back on so that this is earthed out which means that the earth will come through the frame of the lamp because there's no earth wire in this original light. I'll use the lamp frame for the earth. Assemble this together and then we'll have a look. Now I've fitted the lamp bracket and I've added an earth connection there which goes into the connector block. I've made sure they're all on the right terminals and I've insulated the block with some tape. Now all this goes inside. And the other thing I've done is I've taken the, the screw points off so there's no sharp edges inside. So the connector block's just tucked inside. Now on this side I need to add the lamp fitting, which is this. Goes onto there, and this fits back on the lamp. There's the finished lamp, so I can swivel that way, that way, can move up and down. So I'll switch the light on. I can move the light where I need it and we know that now is giving out three times more than the original light. So I've converted the lathe one to LED about a year ago. I've converted this one to LED and the next job is to do the big lamps in the ceiling. That is a 10 watt lamp and is using LEDs for the light. This was the bulb that was in there before. This was an 11 watt lamp, like a little fluorescent tube. So it's a lower wattage than a normal tube, but the light that gives out is about a third. This is the light unit I'm fitting in the ceiling. Let's take the cover off. And you can see each one of those little white marks is an LED. And I think there are 176 LEDs in this lamp unit and I'm using two of those. This is the power connector and here are the electronics that convert it from AC to DC and from 240 down to about 13 volt. You can see there every one of those segments of light is an LED. It's all built into an aluminium frame. To fit it all you have on the back You can screw it through these holes. They do supply cables that clip into these little notches and you can higher and lower it on a, a cable. I'll we'll fit this up and then we'll see what the, the lamp's like. Now I've fitted the two LED lamps and I'm trying to think of a way how I can demonstrate the light 
Uh, the problem I've got is when I make the light brighter with the LEDs, the camera compensates and shuts it down so it looks the same as before. Now this picture of the lathe is with the LED lights. What you're looking at now is a piece of paper and a blue background on the floor of the workshop and it's in between the LED light and the fluorescent tubes. This is the light from the fluorescent tube. Now I'll turn the fluorescent tube off and the LED lamp on. Now this light's from the LED. As you can see the white is whiter and the blue is a bluer colour than the fluorescent tube. Well there's a difference in the light quality and of course you're saving on electricity used. That's it for today. I hope that's useful if you're thinking of changing your workshop lamps and we'll see you next time on Enots Engineering.